guys, so today I'm going to have a little story time with you guys. I don't know if you're going to find this interesting, but I just thought I would share because maybe some of you out there can relate. I grew up in a very religious home. I didn't agree with a lot of the things that happened. I'm not going to go into extreme detail today, but... I got in trouble a lot. I wasn't necessarily a bad kid. Of course, I mouthed off occasionally. I'm pretty sure every teenager in the world does. Uh, I had occasional moments where I did dumb things, but nothing crazy. Like, I didn't sneak out. I didn't have sex with boys. Like, I didn't do anything. I didn't know anything about sex until I turned 18. That was quite shocking to me. So when I turned 18, I was so irresponsible. I did not know how to live. I did not know how to be around people or anything. I, I knew what I was told not to do, but I never knew why? I just was told it was bad. I wasn't educated on certain things. I had this friend named Julia. She was so cool. She was beautiful. All the boys seemed to like her. I mean, looking back, she was a little crazy and promiscuous. And in my naive little sheltered box mind, I thought she was like the coolest person ever. So since Julia smoked, I thought it was cool. So I started smoking. One day we were at work at the retail job that we worked at together and we got off work, we're walking out, get to my complex. This truck pulls up with got full of guys. There's guys in the back. They say, hey, do you want to go to a party? Julia, being the cool person that she was, was like, yeah, sure. Me, being in awe of Julia, was like, oh, okay, sure. In the back of my mind, I had to have known that this was the most stupid thing to do. Getting into a truck to go to a party with guys that I didn't even know. But since Julia was going and thought it was okay, then it must be okay. So off we go to this party. We get there. I have one drink. My first mistake was not going with the guy to watch my drink. Again, I wasn't educated on living. I was just told, no, it's bad. I tell my daughter, watch your drink. Don't let anyone go get your drink without you. Hold it. Keep an eye on it. Don't trust anybody. Because if she's ever in that kind of situation, I don't want this to ever happen to her. One drink. Supposedly a vodka Sprite. After that one drink, which I don't even think I finished. I walked outside and there was this little group of people smoking supposedly only weed. So on top of whatever this dude put in my drink, there was something else in the weed. I think it was laced with some kind of hallucinogen. I don't know a lot about those. Maybe PCP. I don't, angel dust. I don't know what, I don't know enough about that. Like I did a lot of drugs, but I don't know like the correct crap. Like I just did whatever. <laughs> I took one hit, a small hit at that off of this little one hitter, one hit. I go inside and after that, I barely remember anything after that moment. I think either I got drugged in that drink that I had or the weed was laced with something. Either way, I was completely irresponsible to trust not only someone making my drink without me being there, but smoking somebody's drugs when I had no idea where they came from.
I kept fading in and out. I'd remember things, I wouldn't remember things. Back then when I was 18, this is gonna age me, you could push like star 51 or something. I don't remember the exact number, but you could press star something to get to make long distance phone calls. If you didn't have long distance service, it would charge you like 50 cents for the call and then like five cents a minute after that. So even if the person didn't answer on the other line, you got charged 50 cents. Once I realized that somebody had drugged me and I had assumed that it was the guy that had made me the drink, whose house that it was, I was pissed because I knew something wasn't right. I just picked up his phone and I started dialing star and then hanging up star. So he was getting charged 50 cents for every time that I pushed that. And I swear, I sat there for I don't know, maybe 20 minutes doing that over and over. <sighs> Finally, I got bored of that, started walking down the hall, trying to find the bathroom. And I remember looking at the hallway. There was pictures all along the hall. And that guy comes over and like tries to lean in to kiss me. No, 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 no. I shoved him away. What are you doing? I don't want to kiss you. Oh, come on, he says, just a kiss, just, just kiss me right here. And no, like, why would I kiss you? And he says, just kiss me like a friend. Come on, pressure me, pressure me. And I got pissed. Like, what the heck? This is what made me think maybe this guy was the person that drugged me because of how he was interacting with me. I don't remember how I got away. I remember I pecked him really quick on the cheek and I took off. I, I went out to the car. I told my friend that I wanted to leave and I went out to the car. I didn't tell her where I was going. So she was kind of running around the party, panicking, trying to find me. I was sitting in the car. I still had the guy's phone in my hand. So I call my boyfriend at the time and I tell him I was crying. I was so upset. Please come get me. Please come get me. I'm so scared. I don't know what's going on. And I don't know, I don't remember if I told them that I had been drugged or not, but I, I remember telling him that I was so scared and I wanted to go home and I was trying to get out of the car and I couldn't get out and I was crying because I couldn't find the handle to the car. I don't know why, like when you're drugged, I guess perception, there was a freaking handle on the door. I just couldn't grab it. I couldn't figure out where it was. And I was screaming. I remember pounding on the window. Help, help, I can't get out of the car. Like looking, looking back, it's pretty mortifying, honestly. <laughs> Finally, my friend finds me and lets me out of the car or something. Somehow I get out of the car. And I track down somebody because my boyfriend's like, how am I supposed to come get you when you don't even know where you are? Like, the town we lived in was huge. He was so annoyed with me that I went to this party without knowing where I was, that I went where there were people I didn't know, that I had drank, that I was so messed up, and I, yeah, he was super annoyed. It was late. I think it was like one in the morning or something. Finally, I tracked down somebody and was like, hey, can you give my boyfriend directions? I really need to go home. And finally, he came and got me. Ah, uh, that was like one of the worst nights of my life. Probably the stupidest thing I've ever done in my life, or at least one of the stupidest things. My point of this video was to not only give you a, sh a story time that I thought you might enjoy, but also to tell you if you have kids or you are planning to have kids, please educate them. Tell them why they shouldn't be doing things. Don't just tell them no. Give them a reason. Tell them what would happen. Give them options. It's really important that they know the possibilities and not just be sheltered away from everything. Because I know that if I had been told more about some things that it would have probably changed a lot. Obviously, just knowing someone's experience isn't going to stop you from making certain choices in your life, but at least if you have some sort of direction, it might help 
in some ways. Hope you guys enjoyed this story time. I love you guys and please don't forget to follow me on Instagram and I will talk to you next week. Love you guys. Bye.